Welcome back to another episode of Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I'm going to give you guys my guide for bass fishing, soft plastics. So you got it. We're going to talk about a wide variety of soft plastics, and we're going to talk about a few techniques that will help you guys utilize these to produce more bass right here in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, fishing soft plastics is a little bit different than, say, topwater and crankbaits. The reason for that is it's all based on touch and feel. The fish have a tendency to kind of suck these up. So you're not going to get that huge splash like you would with the topwater, or you're not going to get that real aggressive rip at a crankbait. So this style of fishing with these types of baits takes a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge because you have to be able to feel that sensitivity of that bite in order to set the hook. So let's define a soft plastic. What the heck is a soft plastic? Why do I have so many of these in front of me? Well, there's multiple categories of soft plastics, which we'll get into in a second. However, a soft plastic, as you guessed it, it's made of plastic, or it has features like salt or glitter or sand to give it some flash and to give it some texture. But the whole goal behind a soft plastic is to basically make this so it looks like it's alive in the water which will entice a bass to eat it. Anything that moves or looks alive in the water is gonna attract a bass. Now there are literally thousands of soft plastic baits out there on the market. So where do we even begin with this? Well, let's break this down into a few categories that'll help kind of decipher what baits fit into what category and we'll match that up with the technique in order to fish it. All right, so my goal with this episode is to talk about six categories. Now there's a lot more than six categories, but for time's sake, we're gonna focus on those six. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about worms like that, which this is a standard custom Senko. We're gonna talk about creature baits, like the big bite lizards. We're gonna talk about beaver baits, which the best beaver bait out there, really, there's no other bait for me, is the Havoc Pit Boss, which I have a lot of different colors of now. And then we also have two baits. So a two bait like that. We talk about craws or crayfish. So there's a crayfish for you. And of course, your shad or your drop shot baits. Now, most of these plastic baits that I have in front of me are gonna work really, really well with a Texas rig. So primarily, I'm going to focus on the Texas rig because that's one of the biggest types of rigs that you're going to use with these soft plastics. However, there are multiple methods that will work with these types of baits. Carolina rigging, or you guys can simply use like a shaky head or some type of jig head in order to fish these baits correctly. But in this episode, we're going to focus on Texas rigging because a lot of the lakes around me here in Western Pennsylvania have heavy, heavy weeds. And a Texas rig like that will work for the majority of these baits and you can punch these types of baits in and out of the weeds without getting snagged up because again, a Texas rig is weedless. All right, so the first category we're gonna talk about is worms. Now worms come in a variety of shapes, a variety of sizes. Some of them have straight tails like that. Some of them have curly tails like that. And some of them have paddle tails like that. Bottom line with these types of worms, they're very, very thin and they work very, very well in cover. And that curly tail may get stuck on some cover, but it's gonna give you a lot of awesome action in the water and again, make this bait look alive. The straight tail like that, you guys can use these for drop shotting or you can use these for wacky rigging or you can use them for Texas rigging, Carolina rigging, really any type of rigging you want. The paddle tail like that is going to give you additional vibration in the water. So worms are a very good bait to cover water, to really shove in and out of cover, searching for those active fish. Now most of the time with worms like this, when a bass bites this, you're going to feel just a little tick. Or you're going to see that bass grab your worm and start swimming off with it. So again, it's all about feel. With this presentation, there's a lot of different ways to use these, but these types of worms can be really, really good in clear or muddy water. So check out any type of worm out there. 
Get them on a Texas rig and start punching these bad boys in and out of cover. Okay, the second category I wanna talk about is creature baits. And we talk about a creature bait, we talk about something that looks like that. This just so happens to be a Big Bites lizard. Now, the point to these types of creature baits are the additional appendages. So we have arms here, and we have these side flaps, and we have the curly tails, and the Big Bites give you the Big Bite juice, so it's slippery and it stinks, which is always a good thing for bass fishing. However, this bait is a lot more tough to fish in heavy cover. It's not like a worm. It's not as streamlined as a worm because of these appendages. So what you guys want to do with these types of baits is you want to take these and you want to fish isolated cover, maybe like docks or just single logs. You want to stay out of the thick cover because these appendages are going to get hung up. So you guys can take these out into open water or you can even pitch or flip them near isolated cover or you can use these to spot fish. You happen to see a bass swimming in front of the boat, pitch us right down to the bass. These appendages and this style of bait, the whole purpose is to mimic a lizard or some type of creature that swims in the water. And again, these appendages are gonna make this thing look alive. Now, a recommendation for you guys is to take a bait like this and maybe downsize it and stick it on a shaky jig or a shaky head just to give this thing a little bit more action and that'll produce more bass. All right, guys, the third category that we're gonna talk about is somewhat of a creature bait, but they're actually classified as beaver baits. There are a lot of different types of styles of these baits out there, but for me, there's really only one, and that is the Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. Now, I have just about every color in the Pit Boss that they make, and I get it in the four inch pattern. Now, Dix recently had a sale on these. They were five for 10 bucks, so it's $2 a bag. These baits are phenomenal. And what these beaver baits are gonna give you is they're gonna give you a nice fat profile and they're gonna give you those four tails on the bottom that just look amazing in the water. Now the real selling point with the Pit Boss, the Pit Bosses are designed for heavy cover. You guys can stick this thing into heavy, heavy weeds and it's gonna penetrate it, especially on a Texas rig. Another nice feature about this is the ribs. Now the ribs on this bait is actually gonna provide you with more vibration. In addition to that vibration though, you're gonna get a really awesome dart out of this bait when you're popping it off the bottom. It just, it just moves like when you pop it, it's got, the, it's got the flutter of the tails and it's just a really awesome glide and pop to it. Again, with this type of bait, you're gonna be able to punch through thick cover or you guys can flip and pitch this in and around docks or stumps or brush or lily pads or whatever. And this little guy right here in four inches, it's gonna have an awesome flash with the glitter in it. And again, they make so many different colors. It's just a streamlined bait, but yet it's got a decent profile. And this little puppy right here is gonna produce a lot more bass for you especially when Texas or Carolina rigged. All right, now the fourth category that we're gonna talk about is the good old fashioned tube. Now I have again, the Big Bites tubes here. Um, these are in three inches. That three to four inch size is gonna give you an awesome profile that you guys can fish here in PA. And what this tube actually does is it's gonna mimic bait fish, but it's also gonna mimic crayfish. So it's very, very versatile bait. Now a tube obviously has multiple tentacles. So the action that you guys are gonna get with these is gonna be nothing short of brilliant. So this tube looks like that. Now the preferred method up north is typically to put these on some kind of jig. So you guys are either gonna vertical jig these or you're just gonna pitch and flip them in and around cover and just pop them. Again, it's gonna mimic a bait fish or mimic a crayfish. These types of baits are also very, very good for sight fishing when you're just kind of cruising around a lake or even when you're fishing from shore and you happen to see a spawning bass or you just happen to see a bass cruising the shallows. Again, these are very, very versatile baits. You can Texas rig these or you guys can throw them on a hook with a sinker or a jig head 
and these will produce more bass. All right, guys, the next bait I want to talk about is, you guessed it, a crayfish. Now, I, I happen to have the Rage Tail by Strike King here, and these are just absolutely dynamic crayfish baits. And again, primarily these are to mimic one of Bass's favorite foods, crayfish. Now what's nice about these baits is you guys can Texas or Carolina rig them, or you could just simply use them as it, on a jig. In addition to that, these work really, really great as a trailer. And I know some guys that will actually take these baits and they'll use them for trailers on their spinner baits. Now get a good look at that in the blue color. There's a lot of good glitter. And these baits are just really awesome for flipping and for pitching. They're also really good for sight fishing again, when you're kind of trolling around and you see the fish just laying or swimming in the shallows. Now, for smallmouth bass, you guys want to downsize these baits and put them on a shaky head. These can be absolutely just killer for smallmouth, not only in PA, but just virtually in any state. Again, use these types of crayfish on trailers and they will produce big fish. The bigger size, the bigger the bass. Okay, I wanna talk about one other style of bait and that's these types of shad baits that you can see here. Again, with the big bites. But what's nice about these types of shad baits that look like this, they just look like a simple shad or a small fish. What's really awesome about these is you guys can actually take these types of baits and you can drop shot them. So you can take your hook, you have a swivel here that attached to the bait, so it's a tri-swivel, and you take your drop shot off the bottom, and you drop these to the bottom of the lake. You drop them to the bottom of the lake, and they just kind of hang off the swivel, and you guys can jerk them, and they'll go berserk, or you can troll them, or you can just simply throw them out there and wind drift them across weeds. These are awesome, awesome baits, and you can even put these things on a jig head and do some vertical jigging. I know guys that catch big bass on these, but I also know guys that have caught walleye off of similar rigs like that on a simple jig. So check out these types of shad baits and get them on a drop shot because these are absolutely deadly lower in the water column. Okay, again, we covered a lot of information about soft plastics. Texas rigging is a primary method to fish worms, creature baits, beaver baits, shad type baits, really tubes, any type of soft plastic, the Texas rig is gonna be the absolute best method for you to use these types of baits. With that said, here's a quick demo on how you actually Texas rig a bait. So in order to Texas rig a bait, the first thing you have to do is you have to take your hook and you have to go in through the top of the bait. Now, once you go into the top of the bait, you typically go up to about the curve, and then you're gonna bring that hook right out through the side of the bait, like so. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna twist that bait around, and you actually wanna take the hook, stretch the bait out, take the hook back, and then bring it through the top of the lure Pop it out through the top, stretch your bait across, and make sure that that hook is flush with the bait. Now notice, there's also a weight at the top of the lure here. These are basic cone-free weights. Now you guys can use any type of weight at the top. These are preferred for Texas rigging. The cone shape actually makes these weedless and they fit perfectly with the top of the actual hook that you're using. Now for me, I use Texas rig hooks and I got the Texas Rig specific hook kit at my local Dick Sporting Goods. It came with three sizes of hooks and it came with three sizes of weights. So hopefully this demonstration was helpful for you guys to see the process and to see how you Texas Rig a bait. All right guys, I know again, we covered a ton of information about soft plastics and methods used to fish these types of soft plastics. Hopefully you guys found one new bait or one new style of bait here on the table that you guys can go out and try, whether that's on a Texas rig or a Carolina rig or a shaky head, um, or even just with a plain hook. You guys can take some of these baits and do wacky rigs with them. Bottom line is they make a ton of these baits. You guys make them your own, come up with new ways to fish them, and I'm pretty sure that you guys are gonna catch a lot of bass 
on this style of bait. So if you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you like the content overall, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you guys very much for watching. Take care.